One of the things that can be frustrating about using Reason is that as you grow as a producer, you want to add more pro techniques to your arsenal. So you jump online, you put in the search terms, but almost all the results you get are in Logic or more likely Ableton. Or maybe you're watching someone's stream and they use some really cool technique. How do you translate that into Reason? That's what we're going to take a look at today. Oh, sorry to butt in, but if you could hit the like and the subscribe really quick, I'd really appreciate it. So this is a great example. I was watching this Andrew Huang video, as one does, on parallel processing. I'm, I'm gonna make a, I mentioned that before on this channel and I, I made one video on it, but I think I'm gonna make another more comprehensive video on that topic from the reason perspective. Anyway, in this video, he made this really cool rack. I'm gonna just hit play here. Set up for though is splitting the signal internally. Oh, let me go back a little bit. Just a little bit fuller. So uh, this is going into this chain here, which currently isn't doing anything. What I have it set up for though is splitting the signal into just the lows and just the highs. And this is a trick I picked up from Mr. Bill about how you can do this with no phase issues. So you basically. So he had me there. I was like, wait, what? You can make a rack that does that. So I wanted to add that to my arsenal for sure. Uh, he had me at splitting this signal with no phase issues. So what is this rack? Let's take a, let's just take a look at it really quick and then we'll break it down. Basically set up a chain with a low pass EQ. Then you set up another chain that also has a sub chain with this low pass EQ, the exact same low pass EQ settings. Mm. But then on that extra chain, you have another little sub chain where you're flipping the phase. So when you've got the low pass signal playing alongside the dry signal with its phase flipped, um, what you end up with is just the highs. The lows get canceled out. So that okay i think i'm getting this so let's go back and let's just go step by step about how you can do this with no faith i linked the video by the way so if you want to watch it really quick and kind of go over that again to kind of get that concept in your head please feel free but let's follow along in real time and see what happens. And this is a trick I picked up from Mr. Bill about how you can do this with no phase issues. So you basically set up a chain with a low pass EQ. Then you Okay, that's that's our first step. So here, let me show you. Here's my my use case. A little simple base I made with the algorithm. Boy, is that synth sick. Okay, and in this use case, I would, I would actually want to be able to control the highs and the lows and process them separately. So this is a perfect use case. So, okay, the first step, we're gonna make a combinator so we can take this to go and put it in, use it anywhere. We wanna make sure our combinator is set up as an insert. It doesn't automatically do that, so. So he has multiple chains. The signal's being split, so we're gonna need a spider. That's how we do that. And this is going to be our chains. And if you're not aware of how combinator works, uh, I have it routed as an insert. So the signal is going to go through this channel and then it's going to get interrupted here, go down into the combinator and then through the combinator, it needs to go to the devices. And then at some point it's going to need to come back here so that it can hit this output and the, what is the input on the insert effects? So yeah, so it's a chain that goes like this and then through here and then back up here at some point when we figure that out and then back to here. Okay, so we have multiple chains now. Uh, it looks like he's using two here, so we have more than enough. So the first one he said was going to a low pass. No phase issues. So you basically set up a chain with a low pass EQ. Low pass. We can put that here. I'll hold shift so it doesn't auto root. It needs to be fed off the chain selector. <laughs> That's the Ableton word, <laughs> off the spider audio. And then it needs to go somewhere. It could go directly here, but we have multiple things that are gonna go in. So let's just set up a mixer, just to make sure we have control because there's no control over these inputs as well. And I don't think they exist in the Combinator one. So I want everybody to be able to follow along. So yeah. Okay, so we have our split signal going into our low pass and it needs to come out we can go out into our mixer and then the mixer goes back through the combinator and into the insert effects Whew. this is going to be tricky okay 
So that's his low channel, I believe. Yes. So we have our low channel set up unless he added more. With no phase issues. So you basically set up a chain with a low pass EQ. Then you set up another chain that also has a sub chain. Another chain that also has a sub chain. So another chain also has a sub chain. So we can just copy that. This is his high side. So we need to feed that, which we did. And then sub chains here, what's on it? With this low pass EQ, the exact same low pass EQ settings. But so one of them is the EQ and then he has this one labeled dry. We don't know what's on it yet, but we can copy this over, right? Feed that. And then it needs to terminate somewhere, but not, you might be tempted to go here, but no. The way an audio effect rack, audio effect rack works is these two, the sub chain that he has going on is going to get summed together, then hit here where these two get summed together and then the output over here. So, okay. I need these to sum together first. I could make a mixer to sum them and then send that mixer here, but we already have a merger side here, so we might as well just use it. So that's going to go there and that's going to go there and something else is going to come here. Something else is going to come out of here and something else is going to come back into here. I just don't know what it is yet. Then on that extra chain, you have another little sub chain where you're flipping the phase. So when you ah, okay, let me see that again, just to make sure I got it right. If this low pass set up another chain that also has a sub chain with this low pass EQ, the exact same low pass EQ settings. But then on that extra chain, you have another little sub chain where you're flipping the phase. So when you've got the low pass signal playing alongside the dry signal. Okay, I see. So I'm in reason 13. I could just grab a gain tool to flip the phase like that. Boop, boop like that. But since I want everyone to be able to follow along, let's use an old trick and route audio through the Thor. So we can use the split side to feed into the Thor's audio input. I'm gonna do these individually. And then its output is gonna go back to this sum. So now we do have a sum of the signal low pass and the signal straight through. We need to flip it. And also we need to route the signal through the Thor. It doesn't just automatically go through it. So we use the mod matrix, audio input one, audio input two, going to audio output one, audio output two. And instead of using positive numbers like that, we can use negative numbers, which is the flipped version of each of the signals. So boom, we, we uh, flipped a polarity. So we'll call this invert and we can shrink it down. So I think that's all he's got going, right? One channel going through a low pass, one channel going through both a low pass and a, and a phase inverter. Polarity flipper. <laughs> I think that's all he's got going, right? Flipping the phase. So when you've got the low pass signal playing alongside the dry signal with its phase flipped, um, what you end up with is just the highs, the low. Yeah, that makes sense. He has his low pass set, his low passes, both of them, set at a fixed value, the fixed value that makes sense for this composition. Uh, that's where he wants to split his base. But if you're going to use this in multiple projects, you are probably going to need to be able to move that. And you need to move both of these together. Remember, he said the exact same settings. So you need to be able to move both of these together. And the combinator is actually perfect for that. If you're on combinator one and you're following along, you're going to use this knob and these two switches or whichever ones you want. But yeah. But if you are on a combinator two, like me, you make your own knobs. So I want to use those and I want this to be a small feeling. It only needs to be so big. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I said it like that. And 
like so, and then we will space them horizontally. And there we go. That's all we need. We need a knob to move both of these at the same time, and we need to be able to sew the lows, and we need to be able to sew the highs. So here I'll exit. Uh, we don't need this store to take in any MIDI information, so we can get rid of that. And we will get this set up. So low filter, control one, high filter, also control one. Control one's gonna move something on the high filter. What's it gonna move? It's gonna move the frequency knob. And same with the low filter. We can call this frequency. And then switch one is gonna solo the low side. So we'll go to the line mixer. We'll call this output. And we will add switch one and switch two. Switch one will solo channel one, switch two will solo channel two. Cool. So as I move this, those two move, perfection. As I hit this, that solos here, perfection. And as I hit this, that solos there. Excellent. I think we have this set up, so let's test it. When I hit play right now and adjust the frequency we want to split, you shouldn't hear anything because we haven't changed anything yet, right? We haven't added any processing to change the signal. So we should be just hearing it normal as I sweep. Hearing it normal. So <laughs> nothing should change as I sweep. Sweet. So we have signal going through, we can see everything lighting up, but nothing's changing as I turn the frequency knob. That's exactly what we wanted. Let me label these really quick. This will make more sense to you in a second as I solo the highs. So the highs with the filter wide open is that canceled out effect that he was talking about. Because we're getting a full version, unfiltered version of the signal positively, and we're getting a full unfiltered version of the signal negatively. So you should hear nothing. And we do hear nothing. And then as I filter down, we should reveal the highs. And we do. If I solo the low side, we should get the full signal when it's wide open, just like any filter. And then as we sweep down, it should do what low passes do. And it does. Perfect. So this works. I would pack this up in this state as a combinator, although I already did for you. So you can just hit my website and download it if you want. But uh, I would pack this up as a combinator in this state. And then right now I'm gonna show you how to use it. So in this use case, I would wanna add like chorus to this bass to make it sound cooler and more of its time and wider, obviously. But the problem with adding chorus to a bass is that it's gonna mess it up unless you only add it to the top end of the bass. So that's what this, that's the point of this. So we're gonna reveal some of the top end of the bass. And what that represents is the frequency at which we're splitting our signal, remember? So we want just that little bit of highs and we wanna affect just that. So if I add a chorus underneath the mixer, make it gray, cause I'm not insane, uh, it automatically roots as a send return which is super handy because that's what we need right now. We'll make sure that this is fully wet. And then we can send to the chorus on just the highs. And we're getting some width. You might need headphones. Excellent, we're getting safe width. And what I mean by that is here, let me show you. If we add an imager to the setup, this is outside of the combinator. Uh, so it's going through the combinator and then through the imager. So if we take a look at the correlation meter, we're getting plenty of width and staying mostly monocompatible. In fact, if I turn this down just a hair, it still sounds about the same. 
but we're very mono compatible. And if we go down to model mono, we don't lose anything. Now here, contrast that with me adding the chorus to the lows as well. And now we're losing a lot of information. But you don't want effects that are in the time domain to be on your lows. Here, I'll bring this down to mono so you can hear it. It's like smeared. If I take this out, it comes back into focus, but it still has some width. So that's the purpose for that. And now you have the tool to make it work without phase issues. That's huge. The other thing you might be wondering is what if you do want to affect the lows? You only have one send on this mixer. And what if you do want to do something different to just the lows? Well, there's nothing saying you can't make another mixer. We could call this low effects. And instead of running directly from the filter to the output, instead run through this mixer first. Output goes there. And now you can add whatever effects you want. Let's add a distortion. Yes, experimental sound studio. Let's do it. Just double click on that. It'll auto route as a send return. And then I should have mentioned this earlier, but I have the cable clutter turned off just so it's, it was easier for you to follow. That's K on the keyboard. Because otherwise that looks like a jungle. So I had that turned on in case you were confused. Anyway, so yeah, it's that easy. Add another mixer, which in turn adds another send and boom, you got effect. You have control over the lows. You get it. So there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know it was probably a lot to take in. So rewind, watch back. Uh, definitely follow along. It's there's a lot to there's a lot of concepts in there that will start to click if you use them. So yeah, I hope that was helpful to you. I've linked Andrew Wong's video in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, also hit me up on my website on the contact form if you want to take private lessons from me. You can do that. We can do that. I will put together a specialized curriculum just for you based on your goals and your skill level. So yeah, hit me up.